Hello. Hi, stranger. Okay, I know. I I'm really sorry, first of all, for missing a couple days. I went on vacation to a wonderful little piece of heaven out yonder here in Idaho. And um, then I got sick. <laughs> so as you can tell, I don't know if you can, but I have some of the weirdest, like, sinus sounds right now. Um, so I got my tea right here. And I got cough drops that my awesome boyfriend bought me. So, okay. I'm going to start reading. It's August 18th, so I skipped a couple days, like I said. But we're just going to go with it. Trying to stay real with this YouTube thing. All right, here we go. Uh, morning, August 18th. Foreigners have come into the holy places of the Lord's house. Jeremiah 51, 51. In this account, the faces of the Lord's people were covered with shame, for it was a terrible thing for men to intrude upon the holy place that was reserved exclusively for the priests. Everywhere around us, we see similar cause for sorrow. How many ungodly men are now studying with a view to entering the ministry? What a crying sin is it, that solemn lie, um, lie by which our whole population is nominally part of a national church. How fearful it is that ordinances should be pressed upon the unconverted, and that among the more enlightened churches of our land there should be such laxity of discipline. If the thousands who will read this portion will take this matter before the Lord Jesus today, he will interfere and avert the evil that otherwise will come upon his church. To adulterate the church is to pollute a well and to pour water upon fire, to sow a fertile field with stones. May we all have grace to maintain in our own proper way the purity of the church as being an assembly of believers and not a nation and unsaved community of unconverted men. Our zeal must, however, begin at home. Let us examine ourselves as to our right to eat at the Lord's table. Let us see to it that we are wearing our wedding garment, lest we ourselves should be regarded as foreigners in the Lord's holy place. Many are called, but few are chosen. The way is narrow and the gate is straight. Oh, for grace to come to Jesus right with the faith of God's elect. He who smote Uzzah for touching the ark is very jealous of his two ordinances. As a true believer, I may approach them freely. As a foreigner, I must not touch them in case I die. Heart searching is a duty of all who are baptized or come to the Lord's table. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. All right, here's evening. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. Mark, uh, Mark 15, 23. A golden truth is couched in the fact the Savior pushed the myrrhed wine cup from his lips. On the heights of heaven, the Son of God stood of old, and as he looked down upon our globe, he measured the long descent to the utmost depths of human misery. He considered the sum total of all the agonies that, expi that expiation would require and didn't shrink. He solemnly determined that to offer a sufficient atoning sacrifice, he must go the whole way. From the highest to the lowest, and from the throne of highest glory to the cross of deepest woe, this immersed cup with its anesthetic influence would have prevented him from experiencing the utter limit of misery, and therefore he refused it. He would not stop short of all he had undertaken to suffer for his people. How many of us have cried for comfort in our grief to keep us from injury? Reader, did you never pray to be relieved of hard service or suffering with a petulant and willful eagerness? In a moment, providence has taken from you the desire of your eyes. Say, Christian, if you were told, if you want, your loved one will live, but God will be dishonored, could you have put away the temptation and said, your will be done? It's good to be able to say, my Lord, if for other reasons I do not need to suffer, Yet if I can honor you more by suffering, and if the loss of my earthly goods will bring you glory, let it be. I refuse the comfort if it stands in the way of your honor, and let us learn to walk in the footsteps of our Lord, cheerfully enduring trial for his sake, promptly and willingly putting away the thought of self and comfort when it would interfere with our completing the work that he has given us to do. 
Great grace is needed, but great grace is provided. It's a really good one. Um, so something I want to mention too. So I've I've asked you guys to share anything that you have, um, any thoughts, any questions, any um, you know anything really that you want to share in the comments about what I'm reading in this book um, every day. Well, almost every day. And um, I really like there was um, I think. Jeff, I think your name's Jeff, um, you had a really good uh, request, I really liked it, and it was to try to make another, other videos, you know, outside of the reading, and basically share my thoughts, share my, you know, my prayers of the readings, things like that, you know, kind of what I've been praying about, about them, or what, how it's touched me, or maybe an experience I had. Um, and I also, I like that, and I wanted to say that looking, thinking about that made me think of the possibility that maybe once a week I could do something like that. I don't think it would be good every time, because so you guys don't really need to hear everything I have to say every every day when I do these, but um, I would like to maybe, maybe every week um, have a, you know, a separate video to share just my thoughts on a certain day, um, morning or evening or both, that really spoke to me, um, that really touched me or that, you know, I could really feel like I could pray about and think about and study better and just have kind of like a little Bible study on it. Um, I also, though, really like the idea of all of you participating in that. So if you could, what I think would be really neat is by the end of each week, or, you know, if there's a certain passage you really liked, in the comments, just explain, hey, I really think this one would, I, I vote for this one to be the one that we study and talk about in a separate video every week. Or not every week, but um, for the week. Um, and just kind of kind of go from there. That's kind of what I'm thinking. So, um, yeah. What do you think? Put it down in the comment section. And I look forward to continuing this journey with you. It's really cool to see where it's going. So sorry about my laziness and, you know, basically distracted with the beautiful weather and camping and then um, getting sick kind of sucked the last couple days. So I'm feeling better now. Um, just taking some over the counter stuff. Rona, you ain't got nothing on me. And I don't have Rona. I don't think I do. So anyway, just wanted to say like, but how do you do a cross with one hand? <laughs> um, I'm going to keep the Rona away. It's not going to get me. I think I just got cold. Anyway, enough with that. You guys have a great day. See you later. Bye. God bless.